G'day North fans, Heath O'Loughlin here. I'm doing a Zoom chat with a past player. You can see Nathan Grimer, one of the most popular blokes to ever get around in a North Melbourne jumper. Nani, it's good to see you, man. I'd love to see you in person, but we obviously can't do that. Yeah, good, Heath. But no, good to see you, mate. And, and thanks for having me on. I guess I'm not putting an invoice in from this one for, uh, for just based on what's going on at the moment. But uh, when uh, it's been, uh, you're one of the few North staff that still take my call. So, um, it's been nice to, to keep a relationship with you over the last few years. And yeah, and when you ask me to jump on for a quick chat, uh, always a pleasure, mate. And I hope you're well. And um, yeah, thanks for having me on. Well, you were, you're kind of the first person I thought of. And, and mate, I've got to admit, when my phone lights up and I see your name there, I know it's going to be good. Sometimes it's brief. You do have this habit of just like cutting conversations short and then you're just off. Like you just hang up and your brain's going a million miles an hour as it does. I'm in the middle yeah. of a great chat and then you're like, anyway, i got to go bite. And then you're gone. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I have a bad habit of, you can actually hear the people still talking as I hang up the phone, but it all started probably when you'd be, you know, you'd be at the shopping aisle and you'd bump into someone on the first aisle getting your, your toilet paper, I guess, or whatever, and then say good day. And then the next aisle, you cross them again and they'd want to talk to you again. And so I just thought, I just want to be that person that when I've finished having my convo, I'll be as friendly as I can, but once she's over, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, there's no point to keep dragging out the convo. So yeah, when I finish with this call, you'll know because you'll have a blank screen. Or just in, a, just in a bully me out in the kitchen to do the dishes or babysit the kids or something. So, uh, well, not babysit them, but because um, they're mine. But, yeah, so I'll, I'll shut down the call when I've had enough. So. How, how have you gone with the whole shutdown thing, speaking of shutdowns? Um, and you mentioned toilet paper. Have you gone out and got a load of that? Because I, I kind of remember you telling me once that you had a thing about toilet paper. Yeah, no, it's just weird. I don't really have many phobias or anything. I just always felt uncomfortable buying bulk toilet paper. And I know it's sort of funny now that people are fighting over in the aisles, but I I don't know. I just thought that people would look at me carrying like 24 toilet rolls and think I went to the toilet a lot. But I don't know. I just, yeah, the boys at the club um, used to call me the speed, the speed um, crapper or the speed yes worder because I'd try and time it with someone having a leak. So I didn't, they didn't know I was doing a number two. So I'd go, I'd pre-fold the toilet paper really quickly and um, I'd sort of, I'd race in, get the dats down and then, and, 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 and go and wipe and quickly race back out. So then I could pin it on someone else at the club that would make the toilet. So it's just, a, not much phases me, but just that does in particular. But um, yeah. I'm, People would never have known about you. <laughs> uh, they probably wish they'd ever heard from me again, but they know now I've got a phobia toilet paper and going to the toilet for number two. So where do I find you? Obviously not, you don't say in the spare room, but you're in Adelaide, you're back in Adelaide. Is that right? Yeah, so coaching full-time at Sturt Footy Club, or was coaching full-time up until recently, and we'll see how that goes about. I've actually been laying turf today, getting back to my old um, old roots, and ultimate turf now is now the best in the business. So it used to be endless turf, but Stefan's doing a great job in Melbourne with the old company, and yeah, I've sort of got a smaller, smaller um, set up here. But yeah, coaching full-time, Hey, a breakaway. Yeah, no, no. Well, uh, I've moved in the state, and Steph's um, doing great things with what he's doing. But yeah, I was coaching full time, which I was loving. Actually, Brad Scott went as a, a reference on my um, application, so I must have been either a good bloke or a suckhole or what. But I can't thank Brad enough because he actually he probably got me across the line um, as a crap character reference. So <laughs> yeah, Christ. Um, but yeah, no. So coaching full time, loving that. Um, you know, have ambitions to one day maybe, you know, if, if there's jobs there to get back in the AFL. But I'm really happy. Two kids living in uh, Henley Beach in Adelaide. I'm in the spare room at the moment. So uh, where I spend a bit of time when I'm in trouble. And, um, yeah, it's uh, life's really good, actually. What's that um, set up there behind you? It looks like a nice little mantle or something. Antique fireplace, this one. <laughs> so uh, from humble beginnings now, but now I just have antiques just placed around my house in random positions. Is that uh, your style? No, no, I do what I'm told. Um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, meat and three veg, man. But, um, yeah, no, everything here's, yeah, just, you know, that's like, like to style the house. And we've got a nice home. And, yeah, if I can fend the bank off a little bit through this period, I'll still have a nice house at the back end. So, but and how are you going? Uh, yeah, enough about me, I guess, mate. Uh, everything, how you been, buddy? Yeah, yeah no, I've been, I've been great, mate. We're just trying to deliver good content to the North supporters, hence the phone call to you. But... I did say off the top that you are one of the most popular people go, going around um, ever since North Melbourne started 150 years ago. I reckon you're probably right up there in terms of the most popular. But I was thinking I wanted to challenge you or do something a little bit off the cuff because yep, you yep. are so popular. How 
how quick you reckon you could get like a past player or something on this chat or send a call out to get around well, you? Yeah, I just thought, you know, I didn't make much of an impact on the field, but I like to I think I, I come away for the game with, with, uh, with a few friends and... Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I could dial up one of the many past players from my generation, or maybe a little bit before, and uh, and get anyone on for a chat. I guess you hear a lot from the the really big names. So I probably was in that middle tier type operator. So if uh, yeah, no, the Hamish McIntoshes, Aaron Edwards of the world, um, you know, Jess Sinclair. Uh, I don't know whoever you'd like them to dial. I could I could get someone on now if you like. So I was sort of thinking most people are just at home doing pretty much nothing anyway. So there's probably a good chance yeah, yeah. that you'll get a response because. Um, they're they're not that busy. Um, grab. Have you got your phone there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have got my phone. So who do you want me to get on? So do I just invite them into this, or what have we got? I oh, know. I I send you a I'll link. Get a big hand on. Yeah. You forward that link to one of those guys and see who yep. answers the call. Okay. Um, I'll do that right now. Maybe one of your famous get around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. H will get around me. I was best man at his wedding. I was a bit light on in the wishing well though, so I might not. Look at <laughs> Um, uh, jump on Zoom, big fella. Um, this is going to H, big hand. Yeah, yeah, I'll go to H first. We did live together for four years and been best mates for eight years. So if he doesn't get on, I'm stuck. <laughs> we'll see um, how that goes. But Jacinta as well, you got two kids at the moment, right? Yeah, going well, mate. Got a uh, little a daughter, Marley, who's three. Spencer, who's one. Uh, that's good. Parenting's good. I've grown up a lot. Um, happily married and happily living in a quiet estate in Melbourne. Uh, Spencer, old school. Yeah, yeah. Spencer David, he's, uh, he's a bruiser. I've got big expectations for him. Um, but how did, yeah, that, name, no, how did that name come about? Is there a link there or is it? Well, I thought that Jacinta and I were going to actually drop, pick names together and I found a train with Spencer written on it under the spare bedroom and I got booted in there one night. So I was like, well, I guess I'm having a Spencer then. So, yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's not Keith or Greg or Derek or anything. So, yeah, I was pretty happy. But, no, it's, um, yeah, he's, uh, I'm pretty lucky, both healthy. And uh, Spencer spent a bit extra time in hospital before he came out he had for a couple of weeks at the start. But since then, I'm grateful to... To, to have healthy kids and I'll, uh, I'll make sure I get it snipped now and uh, that will be enough for me. That's I'm, it, you're uh, done, you're yeah, done. Yeah, born and get a girl. Yeah, born and girl, so. Uh, hey, mate, while we're, while, we're waiting, while we're waiting, while we're waiting for... with Hank? <laughs> I, I think he's leaving you hanging. You might need to send a message out to some others, like you mentioned Aaron Edwards or, um, I don't know. Okay. Um, someone else. But in, while we're waiting, um, <laughs> do you remember your first game? First game, yeah. Uh, 2009 down at uh, Cadenia Park against... A ramp at Geelong. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They moved with Sammy Wright. Um, I come in as a late change, actually. I was an emergency for a fair few weeks and come in for Brady Rawl. Oh. So, hey! <laughs> <laughs> hey, get around me! <laughs> All right. Here he is. Can get I keep some... telling my story now? <laughs> oh, we need to connect some audio. Hang on. The audio is oh. connecting, Hank. Hold on, Hank. Um, we got you there. Let's see. Hey. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> How are you, buddy? Sorry, boys. I'm having a couple of technical difficulties here. That's okay. Shapers, oh. it's a... Jeez. How you doing, buddy? The end network hasn't got down to Chelsea yet. Nah, That's it's a cool. bit... Um, it's a bit scratchy down here, lads. Apologies. Nah, he was just in the middle of telling us about his first game while we are waiting for you to jump on. Yeah, so... Uh, I don't know, did you, yeah, did you play my first game, 09 down at... We were playing Geelong down there. We are down by 10 goals at half-time. It was... Oh, yeah, yeah, we cool. played, um, we were a lot of, yeah, yeah, down at Kidney Park. Yeah, I played that game. It was Ryder's yeah. first game as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Ryder's first game. So, Ryder was flat on me because, yeah, he was going to be shinbone at 9 5 1, but then I come in for a late change and uh, I went in alphabetical order. So, I just jumped ahead of him in the pecking order. So, that's what I'm hanging my hat on these days. So. Was that in the, um, um, but yeah, Nani, that played was on, in, the, in, the, the, in the powder puff, uh, James Brayshaw's. Favorite jumper, which we yeah yeah. I've actually put this. Back. I, I'm not allowed to put memorabilia at my house because we're just not really a footy house. But I just dug this out from under the under the <laughs> spare room. And this, is, uh, <laughs> this is my match day worn. My match day worn uh, debut jumper. If I auction this off, I wouldn't even be able to get bread and milk. I don't reckon. But I, uh, I've got no pigmentation on my arms. <laughs> I'm just horrific at this end of the mic. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you want to get, get that frame or what? 
Nah, 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 nah. Oh, my memories are in my head. I don't need them on the wall. But I, um, we got beat that day by about 10 goals, I think. And I remember Lade said, um, it won't get any harder than this, mate. So if you get through today, you'll be fine. And yeah, it sort of worked out that way. And I remember my old man was filming the warm-up like it was Oz kick. So I was in a bit of a verbal with Monty about getting the camera out of the room because he yeah, gets broadcast rights to be filming with a camcorder in the warm-up. Well, warm it up and you go for a bottle of spray. He went out of his ass, shattered the pool. <laughs> yeah, no one gives his old man a harder, harder time than Nani than the poor old Mott Heathos, I'm telling you, mate. Is that right? Absolute legend. But, oh, mate, he's a legend, but Nani just gives him absolute hell, the poor bugger. Yeah, I remember some of the stories, you know, you calling him out to fix your car in the middle of the <laughs> night and all that stuff. Terrible yeah, stuff. That, that, was on, um, that was on a Mad Monday, Heathos. That wasn't just a, any random day. That was. He, um, he was just, one day, he, um, at a mad Monday, he, he went past the car on the way to the pub and there was a number on the back of, the, of this little Corolla and he <laughs> was saying for sale. So Nani started calling that number all day while we were at the pub, asking for like things about the car, you know, is it how many Ks are done, blah, 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 blah. And then he got his old man on speaker asking his old man to do a check on the car for him. He <laughs> 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 found like 40 blokes at the pub. So it's to a point at the end of the day where the guy actually comes to the pub. He actually came. Crocs, Crocs told me I wasn't allowed to go out of the pub. <laughs> I don't know. I was just going to buy the car. I don't even know why. Um, Random yeah. stuff. Hank, how have you been, mate? Like, how are you travelling with the uh, lockdown? Um, you just got married as well, I saw. Yeah, I did, mate. Just got married. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, three or four months. Thanks, right. mate. Three or four months ago. So, yeah, obviously, Nate there was, uh, was best man. So, we had a, uh, a lot of fun over the bucks and the wedding and it was actually that day, it was 45 degrees, mate. So we're a bit hot, a bit hot and steamy out there, but we got through it. And yeah, look, from there, mate, it's obviously, we've all had our challenges, haven't we, over the last couple of weeks? And I'm no different than anyone else out there. So just enjoying a bit of quiet time, mate. And um, obviously, there's a bit of work at Carlton, sort of being stood off there as well at the moment. So can you, can you give us a rundown? How many past players, just for the people listening, that you've can still stayed in contact with and, and come to your wedding? It was a fair. It was a fair hot, a fair crew. Yeah, there was, uh, it was probably about 20, 24. Ooh, 22, 23, I reckon, end up coming. So, yeah, we got names. Um, can, we re- can we reel off the names? Or not? Uh, how many can we? Well, we've got obviously you've got your Pratties, your Spuds, <laughs> uh, your Liam Anthony's, your Ash Watsons. Um, <laughs> who else? I've got the Bridal Party, Wonky, Blake Grimmer, Urchie, what, um, Azza Edwards, Levi, Greenwood, um, Taz yeah, sorry, I'm left you out. Zeebs, Zeebs and Taz. There's a couple of stiff omissions too, Heath, I felt real bad about, but. Oh really? Uh, a few old boys. Yeah. A few old... Didn't quite make the cut. Nah, nah. They, they, they didn't invite staff. Sorry, he. Oh no, Codge and Lancey were there, weren't they? <laughs> wow. Hey, I was I actually going to gonna say, Hank. I was going to say you didn't happen to get the teeth whitened in the lead up to the wedding, did you? Nah, nah, they mate. Look, they're actually looking nice they're on, the, uh, on the on the other yeah, day. They're a bit blurry TV, but the choppers are white. Mm. So <laughs> he's, really he's still using the North though. discount at Brunswick Dental. <laughs> I actually can't take any credit from him. They're actually all fake, so they're actually uh, <laughs> they can actually never go dull. So I'm actually they're always nice and bright and nice and short. That Geelong three year deal, Heath, I reckon, had a lot to do with those fresh veneers. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. I see. That's you know, much, it's that's all I pretty much did down there. I was get a fresh set of teeth. It's funny, <laughs> Hank. I was, uh, I was actually thinking we probably last saw you as a footy club in what 2012. Yeah. That whole, I suppose, trade and all that sort of stuff. We'd never really spoken to you about it. I don't know if we can go there with you, but how how did that all sort of come about? Like, was it surprising to you, or did you sort of see that that was where it was going to go? Um, I, I sort of knew it was coming. It's obviously spoke to Nathan a fair bit about it at the time. Actually, is it? Look, at that time was when Goldie was starting to come in and you could see he was obviously going to progress to be a great player. And I was obviously at the point where, not at the back end of my career, but I guess I was starting to come down from my best form and Lades and the coaches were trying to find ways for us to play together. And I knew the writing was on the wall with that, like two rucks in the same side that are genuine rucks. It's just, it's never really going to last. And then I think it was round seven in 2012 and we're playing together and then I busted my knee and missed the rest of the year. And I sort of knew at that point, I saw the year Goldie had that, um, I had one year to go north. I didn't want to leave north. I love north more than anyone, as everyone knows. But uh, it came to a point where I had an opportunity to go to another club. But was very successful. Was in a premiership window and obviously security as well around a contract. So um, yeah. it just sort of come to my position with I stay at north. My position is, you know, at risk really in the side. I want to go somewhere I can really make the number one spot, uh, number one rock spot my own. And that's sort of where I got to. And 
then I've been a good decision, mate, because look a bit goldy, mate. He doesn't get injured too often. So yeah, I would have been um, I would have been slaving away in the twos for a, a long period of time there, mate. Otherwise, um, yeah, so yeah, I was happy with the decision I made, but in there my body let myself down anyway. So I didn't get to play a lot of the footy um, when I went down to Geelong anyway. What did it what did it end up being games wise with Geelong? Uh, I ended up playing nineteen games down yeah. there. That was all in the second year. My first year I had that coming off that knee, uh, the PCL reconstruction, and there was yep. a nasty one. So I missed about two years totals. So I didn't play a game my whole first year there, which made it a challenge, mate, with that side. You had all the superstars there. It was selling, um, you know, Chapman, Bartell, all those superstars, and they recruited me there as to play a role. And the game was actually on TV before the preliminary final in 2013, and Geelong lost by a goal. Um, we had Blitzos, Rucken, and, and Barty, a couple of young kids, and in the end, that's why I was probably there to, to be as a recruit to play that game, and I didn't get to play. So... Um, that was disappointing. It was frustrating. Still frustrates me today that I could have had an opportunity to maybe, maybe play in a grand final, but it's what it is, mate. My body let me down and, yeah, still very fortunate to play as much footy as I did. Can you give us a bit of a rundown on when that sports bet special ran return of the mat when you got to come back from injury that day at the MCG against Melbourne for Geelong or not? I know what you're doing here and I don't like it. So it's, um... <laughs> I, Can you feel me? You know, I don't know about what is this now? Yeah, can, can you elaborate? Yeah, so I've come back from injury and um, sports better brought out this special called Return of the Mac. And it was like an over-under, <laughs> over-under possession. So over seven and a half. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. And I've, I've, obviously don't bet on footy, but I've told all the boys, you know, look, there's you know, the big fellas on sports better. I've, I've made it. <laughs> anyway, this moron, I was living with him at the time. I can't remember how he did it, but somehow he's logged into my Twitter or logged into something. He's put on AFL uh, on the Twitter that there's an irregular betting um, thing going on about on sports bet about this bet. But he somehow had made this false thing up on my Twitter that it wasn't actually true. Nani just like made this thing up. Yeah, I said the AFL Integrity Office is investigating return of the Mac. <laughs> so like, he, he, he nearly threw up his week, bitch. <laughs> Well, the game, I'm about to go to the game and I'm sitting in my stairwell it, with my head to my head going, I'm stuffed here. Like, like, what's oh, wrong, mate? What's wrong? <laughs> I was having a heart attack. And, I'm, and he goes, I'm just joking. I'm like, oh, my God. Anyway, <laughs> I was leaving. And I was supposed to leave the door open for my mum to let the, to, for her to let my dog in. or let the dog in because she was coming to the game. I was that rattled. I left the door locked. So she kind of, I'm on the way to the game. She called me and said that you know, she's locked out. That she can't get the dog in. So I told her to throw the dog over the fence. <laughs> and she, she wouldn't do that. So I had to tell her to go around to Nani's and leave the dog there. <laughs> so no, you know what? He, he, he cashed in the overs. He was handballing them over his head like Liam Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> so you constructed? Was it an was it an email or a text or what? Was no, no I, I think I just I think I somehow copied and pasted from the AFL's Twitter um, to say like I just changed the word and then somehow I didn't yeah I just screenshot the back to eight and he <laughs> he's like oh don't do this to me. <laughs> I was going to play a game over for two and a half hours time. Like, yeah. I was so rattled, mate. I was like, I was shaking. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm done here. And then, like, no um, backbone over this bloke. Just laughed it off and didn't worry about me going to play a good <laughs> if game. They, if they want to know what your mindset's like before an AFL game, you, you try, yeah. I'm more worried about getting H to worry about a betting scandal. <laughs> That's oh, cruel, man. Mate. That is so cruel. Mate. Does that, you don't feel guilty about that, Nani? Mate. If I felt guilty about that, I'd be feeling guilty about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah, well, he still, he had, a, I think he had 18 touches that day and played a really good game. So I was really happy for him, actually. And I ended up with a dog chewing my whole backyard up. So it was perfect. That's um, karma. I, I was speaking to Spud earlier, H, because I said he was having you on. And I was like, you know, when was the turning point when you obviously went from, you know, playing VFL to senior footy? And he reckons you played a really good game in LA in an exhibition game. He reckons that he said that, I don't know if this is true, you, had, you didn't want to pay for data roaming, so you asked if you could borrow his phone and you've texted your ex-girlfriend, hey, babe, had a good game, watch the news, buy the papers, and thought you deleted it, but Spud, but Spud, Spud found it in the deleted items. <laughs> this day, I'm actually denying it, but I'm happy to admit it here. <laughs> to, this day, to this day, I'm not exaggerating, I actually have denied that to every minute to every man, but I'm happy to give you a script today, Heath Austin, that actually was true. <laughs> <laughs> What's, hey, how'd you go, babe? What's the, what's the news by the papers? You've always been a bit of a big noter. I had Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta give me a big bottle of, um, of champagne for best on, mate. So I was a bit excited. Yeah, yeah. What, about that, um, what about the day um, when, uh, when 
Lives called you into his office after you had 35 at Port Melbourne and thought you were going to get a senior game. Gee, you've come with the, um, come with the mail here, haven't you? Yeah, that's um, some smarter. Uh, um, well, I thought I was going to play my first game because Drewy, Drew Petri rolled his ankle the week before. Uh, so I thought I'm the next tall in, obviously. And I'm coming off 30 at Port Melbourne that day. And after, after every meeting, Lades would... Um, Lades would always, always want to see two or three players to go through some vision or have a chat. And after the uh, meeting, he just said, I want to see Hale, hey, McIntosh and Watson. And I thought, well, I'm pretty much banked here for my first game. Drew, he's on pretty much one leg. His ankle's stuffed. So anyway, I go to his office. I sit down. And we're at the days of the VCR at this stage. I sit down. He wouldn't say anything for a minute. Then he puts his paper down. He puts the VCR and he presses play. And then turns his TV, turns his computer around. And the first edit is me getting a kick out of full back and the 10 metres out in the back pocket. I thought, oh, shit, this isn't good. <laughs> then he fast, he fast forward it to the next edit and Luke Kochett from Port Melbourne marks it and I'm um, wrapping around for a handball receive and just as I get the handball receive, he pauses it and goes, right, if I ever see you play like this for, for this footy club, ever, if I ever see you play like this ever again, you'll never represent this footy club. Now get the hell out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. I went out, there was obviously a bit more different wording to that, but I, I went down to his, um, all the boys, all the boys like, you're playing, you're playing. I said, I'll be lucky to play, be playing Port Melbourne seconds at the moment, the way I'm going <laughs> that meeting. But I'm like, I couldn't believe it. Coming off 30, Drew, he's at his ankle, and I'm pretty much getting dropped to the twos. So he's gone through every single touch and just sort of scrutinised how you got yeah, to the two, 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 two of the touches. I was playing like a five foot eight player and I should have been playing like a six foot seven player. <laughs> now that like a 200 centimetre getting the kick in the back pocket. I must be, I thought I was Dean Cox for a minute. <laughs> so, well, no, you had, uh, how's, how's your record on Dean Cox, actually? <laughs> my, my, record, my record on Dean Cox wasn't great, mate. That was... Um, in terms of toughest opponents, jeez, he was... Uh, in 2007, 2009, he got... In six games I played him, he got five best ons. <laughs> Did he have gastro on the six? <laughs> I think the other one, he got four votes out of five. So that was a victory for me. Small wins. <laughs> um, while we're going through that, you, so he'd probably be your toughest opponent, Hank. I was going to ask you, who in your North Melbourne time, who do you, who's the best teammate you ever had? Like, and I'm talking about the bloke that would give you his last dollar, like your, your best teammate. Oh, there's probably a few. Lee Colbert, when I first got there, springs to mind straight away. Um, not only just how he was with the team, with all the boys, just how he was with the whole footy club. So he just, he just got around all the older guys, some of the arch as well, just all the trainers, all the um, volunteers. Made them feel welcome, always taking them for dinners, helping them out, whatever they need. So that was like Orb and um, Skull and all those guys. So um, just him as a whole footy club environment um, and how Colby was in organising crews and footy trips and, and all those sorts of things. He was just unbelievable. So definitely him in, in the early days. And then sort of towards the back end, obviously Drew Petrie's the one that strings the mind for everyone. Yeah. Um, probably the worst guy ever to go to a function with because you drive in the same car with him, you'll like literally say goodbye to every single person in the room before you go and you're there to <laughs> one you to hang up like, hey, hey, see ya. <laughs> you're in the room and you want to leave and Drew is... Dead set shaking everyone's hand and hugging everyone before we go. And the room's pretty much empty, but he had one more person to say goodbye to. So that's the sort of character he is, mate. He's just a great bloke. And um, yeah, they're sort of the main two that's ringing mine as, as people I've played with. I'll just on Colby H for a sec. But I can't remember. I wasn't at this one, but what's the story when he, he rocked in a footy trip when he wasn't even playing in Thailand? He said he came in on a boat or something just to give an idea to people what he's like. That was Archer's last trip in 2007 on footy trip. So Colby, so obviously Colby and Archer are very tight, good friends. And um, so Colby didn't tell anyone he was coming to Thailand. Colby actually wore a mask and a wig for a couple of days and was walking around uh, Thailand where we were and was actually in bars and cafes where we were all drinking, sitting down near us and no one had an idea he was there. So he was just in the skies, as that's what Colby does. And then on the third night of, um, on happy hour, Colby come in from the ocean on one of these boats and was waving his big flag and had a monkey on his shoulder. And everyone just thought, of, who's that? And then Colby come all around to the beach in this boat and I took his gear off and he goes, I'm here boys for Archer's largest last footy trip. And he just walks into happy hour and he's already been there for two days wearing his mask and a wig the whole time. And that, that one, retired two years earlier. <laughs> yeah, retired two years earlier, just come on the footy trip for Arch. That's no, unbelievable, mate. But he, he is, that just sums him up as a bloke. He was just, honestly, the best footy tripper. Just, all-time legend of a guy to hang around. What about um, loosest teammate? 
here's a couple that spring to mind. Um, so this is probably someone that just, no matter what, you just couldn't get them to pull their head in. I would have liked to give him some warning for a say, but obviously, my good mate Aaron Edwards is always the one that springs to mind pretty quickly. So um, there's so many stories, but I don't even know where to begin with that bloke. But you know, I still love you as. But we'll have to get him on Heath. <laughs> yeah, he can come and respond if you want. But I've been with him on footy trips, Heath. Like my God, mate, it's that. It was the worst four nights of my life. I've still got bloody, <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've gotten still mental demons from all those trips now. We just got to Vegas at a pool party and literally was there three hours and having an absolute great start to the trip. And then I'll see Mick, Kennedy's, Mick Kennedy coming through the crowd. I mean, what's Mick Kennedy doing? In Mick Kennedy, Kennedy was, was, for those at home watching, it's, he was, I suppose, a bit of a chaperone. chaperone. Yeah. 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 So he was, and then he, he just comes walking through the crowd with the phone. He said it was for me. I'm like, oh shit! I'll turn my back on him. And then he kept. He goes, mate, it's late. And I said, you got a call. I said, oh, this is interesting. And so I walked out. I'm literally at MGM Grand at Wet Republic, and I walked out to the front of the um, the area. And then I got on the phone. And it was late, and Lades was just kindly telling me I'm up for trade. Oh, so, that time. Yeah, up to, I was up to, I'm literally in a pool party. I'm like, oh, shit, this is good. And then so I was a bit obviously upset. So I left straight away and went to the room. All the boys would come up to me and make sure I'm all right, blah, blah, blah. And then Jesse Smith, that was, you know, Heath, the very aloof man he is, didn't come to pool party. He's playing a poker tournament. And then he's playing a poker tournament by himself. So anyway, I was in the room. All the boys had left to go out. So I need a bit more time. So I was sitting there with Lancey, um, with Vicky Kenny and Lancey. And then I was sitting there. And then Jesse, uh, Jesse Smith walks into the room. I'm obviously sitting there by myself with Mick Kennedy, like crying. Jesse Smith walks in, <laughs> looks at me and goes, oh, where are the boys? I said, oh, they're at the nightclub. He goes, right. Just went to the right, grabbed the shirt out of his bag, went out, shut the door and walked off. <laughs> Didn't even ask how you, what was wrong. I was crying in the room by myself. I had tears running down my face. He just goes, right, mate. See you later. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, oh, what a great bloke. And that, but it does, that just does, it does some spitty up. But like, he's just a random man. Just saying it's that right. though, Hank, it obviously, um, that obviously cut you pretty deep getting that phone call though. Like, I mean, that's the other side of footy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, look, obviously I was flat. I just signed a contract, but in the end, I, I'll see the, I'll see it from both sides. And then it, it gave me a kick up. It really revved me up the next year and gave me a kick up that I probably needed because 07 was a great year for me. And then 2008, I came in underdone. I sort of, sort of um, was a bit injured the preseason. Didn't have a great year, then got injured. Um, so, Obviously, I never wanted to leave, but it gave me, a, I suppose, a good poke in the back to say, hey, let's you know, pull your head out here and, and get back to uh, getting fit and, and playing the footy you can. And that's sort of what happened. And 2009 had another decent year. So, look, the effect of what it had, whether I did get traded or didn't, it, it definitely helped my football the next year um, to realise that, hey, be appreciative for the position you're in and um, yeah, come out and play good footy and play for the footy club. So, um, yeah, but yeah, but it just shows you how much the landscape can change, mate. And, you know, it's, it's a ruthless industry and it'll be, um, but it's, it's the nature of the, uh, the landscape that we're in at the time. Lades, uh, Lades loves H Heath, and uh, it was only recently at, at H's Bucks. So I reckon we, between probably about a seven hour period, it was just everyone just told Lades stories. <laughs> like, I was only, like, and these aren't bad stories, these are just some of the funniest stories that you'll. Uh, and when we went and watched Boomer's record breaking game, there was a group from sort of my era through, then back from there, you know, uh, Daniel Harris, Jesse Sinclair, Lee Colbert. And Lades walked past and was like, can I sit with you boys? And like, we did not watch one kick mark or handball of Boomer's game because for the whole two hours, Lades just told every story that he had on every bloke that played at the club. And, mate, it was the best two hours of our lives. And um, mate, I will say one thing about Lades, mate. Like, I always loved Lades, yeah, as a coach. Like, he rode me as, as hard as anyone, yeah. Like, he, as a coach, I, I swear I've never been so, so feared of a man of, of more in my life. But... Thanks to him, he got me to the point where I did. Because, like, he, my first year of training, I couldn't even, first time trial I did at North, I couldn't even finish it. I'd first one I'd ever run at North, I'd finish, got to the 2K mark, threw up and walked home. So I was so unfit. But Lage used to do all the running with me, he used to poke me on the back. I'd be that far behind, but he'd run with me and just say, Get going, you bastard. And he'd be poking <laughs> <laughs> Get going on me back. And then, like, he just always, and he just, he got to the point where he'd just see me slipping off. He'd make sure I was always doing extras and all that. And I needed that because I was just so, Raw and underdone where I came from, and uh, I loved him uh, as a coach. He was like, he was hard, but he had a quirky sense of humour. When he wasn't like that, I found him really funny. So, um, yeah, the stories for Lades, mate. You need another Zoom session to go through all them because we'd run out of 
you'd run out of time, mate. So it's literally just a whole other day to go through those. And yeah, when you're ten beers deep, mate, they're even better. I might get, uh, I might get next call, Heath. I might get Jess Sinclair or someone from that era through to uh, to tell a few lay stories, mate, because you'll really. It was Jesse Clare the one that called him the Bible, I think. So he called it, I think Jesse called it loads of Bible because he's that hard to read. And I, <laughs> I think that was in the paper. I think that might have been in the paper. That was, might have been their old son, loads of, loads of Bible or something like that. And yeah. <laughs> I think I remember reading that. Yeah. I think hey, hey, she was saying um, you were a fair way back when you started. Someone was telling me in your first year when the boys used to swim in the 50 metre pool at MSAT. You used to swim across the diving pool, eight metres back in the pool. And by the time you pushed off and stretched out, you touched the other end. <laughs> I wonder who that was, because there was a guy next to me, and you mentioned before, I was doing it with me. That was old Spuddy Ferrito and I, because we couldn't swim. Paul Hamilton at the time made us go do the same session, but in the diving pool. Yeah, because we couldn't swim. So boys would do 20, 50 metre laps. We'd do 20, 18 metre laps in the diving pool, because that's all we could do at the time. So. Yeah. Spud and I couldn't even put our head underwater with that bad at swimming. Um, sort of semi-victory in the way. So we just had to do it in the diving pool rather than doing it out in the, uh, the main pool. They're some of the worst swimmers you've ever seen. There's a nice yeah. photo of you and uh, Spud there, Hank. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, I reckon that's one of the last photos before they removed all the, um, removed all the lockers out of there. So, yeah, it was. It was, it, was the, it was the last training day at the, um, at the old facility because I remember... You can see Spud's got a moustache there. You don't, but it was around the Movember period. Yeah. No, that was, uh, those rooms are so good. It just summed all up at the time, mate. It was just, we didn't have much, but we made it, we appreciated what we had. Um, as I said, the crew blokes were so tight, so it didn't matter what we had, we just made it work and whatever the gym we had. And yeah, you know, I remember the old gym used to leak water and all those sorts of things. But then there were just stories you still talk about today and what made the group so good. And yeah, those change rooms, mate, many of, Many cricket sessions, many um, yeah, many times talked, and obviously Spud's a very good friend of mine, so a lot of good memories. Yeah, we um, those showers in that change rooms, Heath. They used this is no mayo like there wasn't enough chow, and look, people whinge now about you know not having everything, but back then there wasn't enough taps on the showers to turn the taps on and off. So you you turn your tap on and then pull pull the handle off and give the handle to the next bloke. So. Yeah. If you didn't get your temperature right, you had to stand there until the, the tap come back. <laughs> like, mate, everyone would be fighting for that end shower because the end shower was the one that had the good nozzle and the good spray. <laughs> so it's a lot of time. We had like 20 blokes standing around that yeah. shower trying to get in. And, mate, I don't, do you remember oh, the old gym? Do you remember the old gym, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, old, the, the bar was. Remember how we couldn't, they couldn't turn the lights on when it was raining because there was about 55 mop buckets in the gym catching all the water for the light fittings? Yeah, and the other story, I remember the Michael Fredo threw a medicine ball through a wall and there was a beehive in there. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, North fixed it. They just got a uh, two by two metre bit of wood and just hammered over it and just, <laughs> just, got, just got on with it. <laughs> oh, mate. That's, um, that we, we had like one of the dumbbells there, Heath. That was, it was that old, it was still in pounds. <laughs> and, um, I think it was, it was a real good weight that you use for a lot of things like upper flies and a bit of feet. Like, and someone dropped it and it broke one of the plates. So they just got out a bit of eight mil, uh, the 8 mil rigid ankle tape and just taped the plate back on. And we used it for, not one person complained. We used it, I reckon, for another 12 months. Like, it was the best time. It was a way better plane when the facilities were like that than when they were new. Like, it was just, it was brilliant. Mate, we, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it was a great crew, mate. It was... Um... I remember when I first got there, it was the old gym before the, the, the grandstand got um, taken down. We, the gym even there was older. I think there was asbestos up in the top room where the trainers used to hang out and, try, and have their beers after. I'm pretty sure there was proven to be asbestos in that room. So they've been drinking beers for 20 years. Um, <laughs> when we started, when you were there, H, you had the, um, we used to have to do compulsory boxing in the, in the boxing gym. And um, here you used, because you're one of the big boys, you used to get paired up with Big Sav Rocker. <laughs> How did that go for you? Yeah. Gee, Spud's giving us good mail here, isn't he? Um, well, all right, that's the last, the last story I'm telling you. This is this fun. So, <laughs> mate, this is actually no good. After, uh, so, if we have a bad loss, Slades would say we'd get it, we'd just be hanging for it. They'd be get a texty like the night before, boys, 6, 6 a.m. session, bring your clubs. And again, here we go. So, we got to the club the next day, and then every, he'd make everyone get in the ring. And um, have to fight one minute. Can't block, can't defend. You just got to throw punches, yeah. And he gets obviously people up his own size. Um, so, for instance, Shannon Watt 
had to get in there and had to fight seven rounds against seven fresh blokes because Shannon White didn't play too well the day before. So he made seven new blokes go through Shannon and belt the crap out of him. Yeah. So then I, I had to get in there against Sav Rocker. And mate, I was absolutely packing myself because I can't box a crap. And I'm, so I've got straight in the ring. They've, they've got straight in the ring. They've blown the, um, blown the uh, whistle. I said, go. I've gone straight the corner of the fetal and they've not tried to move. <laughs> and Sav is just laying the absolute crap out of me, just punching and punching. And they've got Lades that come around to the corner of the ring and goes, I'm not letting you out of here you throw one punch. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm just sitting there and I bet you went, oh, this through the softest left hand you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, God. The boys used to call me Frisbees because I couldn't throw them straight. I was like throwing Frisbees, you know. Like, I had no pairing. So they used to call me Frisbees Macintosh. And That's then I was like, um, I got big Sav, who's just a oh, powerful unit, and I'm in the corner. It's this young kid, raw, absolutely shooting myself, and again, this ain't good. But um, yeah, that was a good time. So I got out of the ring. He didn't go easy on you, Sav. He actually. Ah, he had laid Jill and out everyone to punch the hell out of each other. <laughs> if, you, if you said sorry, Jackie King, the boxing coach, would try and kill you. <laughs> I remember Jackie King. <laughs> Mate, I might be tall, Heath, but I'm the, just a gentle giant, mate. I'm pathetic, mate. I, I don't pretend to be a fighter at all. So if I see a fight, mate, I'll act tough, but I'll run the other way as soon as I start throwing them. I know, I know, I know this interview's about you, Hank, but can, how was I as a coach at Stratty? Did you, were you, did you learn anything under me? <laughs> That's more Nani. It was good playing under big Norm, actually. It was, uh, Norm had to be in the gun early, Heath, because I was obviously made, I was made of paper mache, mate. I was getting injured, injured every two seconds, as you can imagine. But I never, I never really trained. But Norm's aggressive, like real aggressive. He's, I'm Norm. Got him, I'm Norm. He's, yeah, Norm, by the way. Why do you call him Norm? No, big Norm. Well, I can't remember now. I've just got that many nicknames. I've lost track. But why are you Norm, actually? Um, I can't remember. Might have, third, might have been one of my fake names. <laughs> just, again, just to clarify, this is you coaching at Strathmore, Nani, and you had yeah. Hank in the team. You had Michael Frito there as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we, might be somebody, we might be somebody's best mates, Heath, but don't let that rule, don't let that fool you, mate. He'd let the dead set rip straight through us as we ever got the chance, especially old Mickey Carino <laughs> a couple of times when he used to step out of the square out of full back and call the ball. Spud kept Spud right over the square, out of the square at full back, like to gain an extra two centimetres. So in, <laughs> can't let that go. This last story was stressful. I've never been so scared in my life. So Nani's called a uh, meeting before training and said, look, boys. We need you to be more attentive and listen in, you know. Like, I'm just not a group, you know. When I'm speaking, you've got to listen to me. All this like in front of those all boys, yeah, yeah, let's make a pack, let's do it. I, I don't know what happened to me. I don't know what came over me. But we've literally gone out to the first drill. Nani's pulled us all in and I just got distracted. And I just started talking about something random to one of the boys. And Nani's literally sprayed us five minutes before it, saying, boys, I need you to listen in when I'm speaking to you all the group. And I just got distracted, started speaking to one of the boys. And Nani saw me doing it. And my God, like... I thought my dad used to give me rip through me, give me spray. But I did say it felt like I was getting the horse whip off my dad when I was there. <laughs> yeah, it was the most scariest moment of a life. Like, I was like... I was under the pump, eh? Big Norm hates me. Big Norm hates me. Bad well, time, Nani. Hey, hey, well, zero and three, and I had, I had half the AFL at my disposal, so I was starting to feel the pinch. <laughs> nah, that was good times there, Heath. It was just like, good hey. club, good local footy. It was good fun to get me, Nani, and... Uh, Nani and I and Spud to play a year together again. So obviously you're all going your own way. So it was, Nani, uh, did you do you remember that spray you gave H? Do you do you feel was, guilty yeah, for that one? Memory of an elephant, this bloke. Nah. I um it's hard actually, Heath, when you coach. So I coached obviously H who was in my wedding party, both my brothers, uh, who I'm great mates with, and uh, and Spud and Nick Lower and I'd spray them that hard, but then I'd feel a bit guilty like later at night and I'd text them and be like, are we still friends? <laughs> like, a true, like a true cow to me, little brother slime would just be like, lose the number, mate, stop texting me. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to make sure I was fair and reasonable with everyone. And um... But then when Nani gets back in the source, Heath, he clips all 45 blokes on the list. So <laughs> he's, got, he's got a pretty long Sunday when he's got to text 45 boys back. <laughs> That didn't change the oh, relationship though, H. Like it didn't, nah. you didn't, nah, all good. Nah, Water off duck's back. back mate. It's, you've got, you got footy related, you've got your coach, you've got your, you know, very good mate. So you just got to get through it, mate. And no, no one's immune to getting sprayed. If you're doing something wrong, you got to get sprayed no matter who the coach is. So well, we'd what? always, but we'd, we'd literally leave training and we'd call on the phone two minutes later. So we'd just start talking shit. So there was no, 
there's no animosity there, mate. Did, I just want to know, as a one, player coach, what what was he actually like? Did he follow through on his own instructions? I'll give it. To, I don't usually talk up the big fella too much. So I don't want to give him a big head, but I'll give it to him, mate. His knee was as as cactus as anything I've ever seen. Yeah, when I played there, so. He obviously did his ACL. And, mate, he used to grit and play through that and do the best he can and still play well, mate. And if you saw his knee, his knee was that full of fluid. It was bigger than my head. Like, and he'd be literally getting it drained. So this is local footy. Literally getting it drained <laughs> to, play, to, play, to play local footy. And, like, I remember Bruce Reed was his doctor. I used to go see Bruce Reed a couple of times. Even Bruce Reed was mortified going, what is this guy doing? So, but his knee, and, but he grit, he'd play, he'd play well. He, he couldn't run, couldn't train. Um, so as a player, mate, he, he gave all he could. So all the players sort of followed behind. As you can imagine, mate, he's just passionate as all hell. Yeah, I didn't want to play, he, but I uh, half our lift. One of our ruckmen went snowboarding three weeks out from finals and uh, broke his collarbone, and we I want to kill him still. Um, so I ended up rucking against blokes like Fabian De Luca and Adrian and Andrew Brown, who are bigger than eight. So. Um, but we could yeah. have been the, we could have been a rut part a rut, a rut premiership combo. Hey, that's what we sort of wanted in the end. That's what was our dream, but we didn't get it because we choked. But we choked, we choked. But um, I lived with H for about four years, Heath, and he actually tried to kick me out one night, so I had to t- I had to remove all my stuff from the house. <laughs> Why? How long you got the Zoom call for, Heath? Are we just going to cut and edit this stuff, or are we just going to put? <laughs> I think we're just letting it go at the moment. Now he just keeps throwing yeah. some gold out. Yeah, there. yeah. Well, you, just, you, you get it. You edit what stories you need. Um, but. We, um, when we lived together, Heath, so I couldn't go out one night, I was injured. And then, so Nani's gone out with a few of the boys, I won't say who the other boys were. And then he's come back at like one thirty in the morning and wants to keep drinking. So whatever, I don't care. My ha- that house at the time had two lounge rooms, had a lounge room downstairs and a retreat upstairs. For some reason, that numb knuckle has come up and brought the party to the upstairs retreat, which is right in front of my bedroom. <laughs> So I said, I walked out of my bedroom like two. I said, mate, I don't care you drink it. Just go downstairs. Like, just let me sleep. So anyway, he's gone downstairs in a ruckus. And about 15 minutes later, I'm just like, I can hear all this noise and commotion. I'm like, what's going on here? I walked out of my room. Nani's got thrown his whole mattress and his whole wardrobe down the stairwell. It's literally all the way down the stairwell. I go, what are you doing? He goes, I know I'm not wanted, mate. I'm moving out. <laughs> it's like... Two o'clock in the morning, and his whole wardrobe, his mattress, his bedhead, everything's down the stairwell. Gone. I miss bit. Like, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of resistance from him. <laughs> I actually started packing it for him. <laughs> That's yeah, brilliant. No, no, we had a lot of fun, mate. It was, uh, I've lived with a lot of good blokes, mate. All old North boys. Obviously, Nani here, Spud, uh, a, man, a man called Blakey Grimmer. A bit before your time, Heath. So, all guys were in my Barolta party and all were great housemates for different reasons, mate. I've got stories for days and days about us and them, but obviously, mate, we've only got so much time on this uh, on this call. Well, Hank, it's been amazing having you jump on this phone call, mate, or this Zoom call. Um, thanks to Nani for getting you on there. You answered his call to get around him. So um, it's good to see you, buddy. Good to see you doing well. Um, in, I hope you're okay in isolation with Sonny there and um, stay in touch, huh? Thanks, mate. And I said, now I'm... Uh, not the Colton anymore, mate. So we'll be back down watching the uh, the mighty Kangas, mate. And uh, when we all get through back and, and they're playing again, mate. So I look forward to getting down and seeing all your boys. And hope you're having a few wins, legends. So see you soon. Always thanks, welcome. Man. Always welcome. And thanks, to you, Nani, thanks very much, buddy.